Hello and welcome to Micro Teaching. How did the early Weimar government survive attack from left and right? As always, the best place to start is our focus questions, and we have four today. By the end of this video, you should be able to briefly describe both the Spartacus Rising and the Cat Putsch. You should be able to explain why both groups tried to take control. You should be able to explain why both attempts failed. And finally, you should be able to explain how they weakened the emerging German government. The best place to start this topic is Germany at the end of World War I, which is in a dire state. Making matters worse, their leader, Kaiser Wilhelm, has abdicated. He's run away to, to Holland. This leaves a confusing situation in Germany, with nobody really sure about who should be making the big decisions that do need to be made at this critical time. The first person to step into the power vacuum is Ebert. He's the leader of the Social Democrats, and he's elected chancellor through a democratic election. Important to remember, at this time, democracy was quite a new idea, and many Germans didn't trust it. So this means being a democratically elected was not as helpful in gaining him more support as if he'd been a modern day politician. Almost as soon as he assumes control, he's faced by a political attack from the communists. The main communist group in Germany at this time are the Spartacists. They're led by a gifted writer and speaker called Rosa Luxemburg, who was from Poland, and also Karl Liebknecht. They believe that because Germany is so poor at this time, with many people suffering real poverty, there is a good chance that they can turn Germany into a communist country, just as happened to Russia in 1917. Nice quote here from Rosa Luxemburg. Those who do not move do not notice their chains. What she's encouraging ordinary people to do is to rise up in revolution against the rich capitalists who she blames for Germany's disastrous state. To do this, on the 7th of January 1919, she calls a general strike and 500,000 people join in. This is a significant number. Some of these people managed to take over key government buildings and some of these people even managed to arm themselves with weapons. At this stage, the idea of Germany becoming a communist country is not completely out of the question. Eber, as the Chancellor, turns to one of the only options he has, the Freikorps. The Freikorps are the free German army, the soldiers who should have handed over their weapons at the end of World War I, but refused to because they didn't believe they'd really lost the war and actually blamed the communists for that defeat. This meant that they were only too happy to listen to Ebert's request. And with their advanced military weaponry and their advanced military training, the workers who form the Spartacists are no match. 156 of these Spartacists are killed, and both Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht are murdered. At this stage, you might be forgiven for thinking that Ebert was good friends with the Freikorps, but that's not true at all. The Freikorps also mistrusted democracy and would have preferred the return of uh, a dictatorship, a strong leader at the top. They also blamed leaders like Eber for signing the Treaty of Versailles, which humiliated Germany so much. So this meant that when the Treaty of Versailles came to be implemented, they were furious. When the Treaty of Versailles said that there would only be 100,000 men in the army, the Freikorps decided that enough is enough, and led by General Wolfgang Kapp, the Freikorps march into Berlin and try and take control of the country violently. There's such a threat that the government flees to Dresden, knowing that if they stay there, they're likely to be in significant danger. Ebert now realises that he needs the support of the workers. This isn't going to be easy, because many of the workers were actually friends or close or even met communists themselves. This meant that he was asking for help from the group that he had crushed using the Freikorps. However, the workers do recognise that life is likely to be worse for them under the Freikorps than it would be under the Social Democrats, so they go on a general strike. This means they refuse to do any work at all, and as a result of this, Cap gives up. He realises that although he might have military control of a country, he will not be able to run that country if he can't get anybody to work for him. That concludes this topic. Let's finish with our focus questions, and then we're done. Can you now briefly describe both the Spartacus Rising and the Cat Putsch? Here on the diagram. Can you explain the reasons that both groups tried to take control? Can you explain the reasons why both groups failed? And finally, take a minute to think about this. Are you clear with how this weakened the government? 
Although Ebert had survived short term, he'd had to use political extremists to do it, and this didn't make democracy look very strong at all. Thank you very much for listening. More videos to follow.